Welcome to Headline News 24/7. Please click like and subscribe. After North Korea insults America, Trump makes a globe-shaking announcement. President Trump shook the globe today when he canceled the scheduled summit for peace negotiations in Singapore with North Korea's Kim Jong Un. He attributed the withdrawal to North Korea's tremendous anger and open hostility. The meeting was scheduled for June 12th and was to be the first face-to-face -face meeting between North Korea and a sitting president of the United States. It would have been historic. Sadly, based on the tremendous anger and open hostility displayed in your most recent statement, I feel it is inappropriate, at this time, to have this long planned meeting, Trump wrote in a letter to Kim. The president dictated every word of the letter himself, a senior White House official told reporters. He had spoken earlier this week of walking away from the talks and Trump is a man who keeps his word. Not only was Kim insulting and inciting aggression, Trump no longer believes he can honestly be dealt with or that the meeting is in the best interests of the U.S. Testifying before lawmakers on Capitol Hill, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said that North Korean officials had failed to respond to numerous inquiries from the U.S. about gathering preparation teams ahead of the June 12 summit. We had received no response to our inquiries from them, he said. The NOCOs have broken off communications with us. A great deal of President Trump's letter was gracious and friendly. Trump left the door open for Kim and thanked him for the wonderful dialogue that had developed in recent weeks between the two nations. If you change your mind having to do with this most important summit, please do not hesitate to call me or write," the president said. The world, and North Korea in particular has lost a great opportunity for lasting peace and great prosperity and wealth. He added, this missed opportunity is a truly sad moment in history. The president also expressed his gratitude for the release of the three American hostages from North Korea earlier this month. But President Trump also responded to the threats from North Korea. You talk about your nuclear capabilities, but ours are so massive and powerful that I pray to God they will never have to be used. The White House also stated today that the U.S. military is ready if necessary to respond to any foolish or reckless act by Pyongyang. For context, the letter reads in full. May 24, 2018 Dear Mr. Chairman. We greatly appreciate your time, patience, and effort with respect to our recent negotiations and discussions relative to a summit long sought by both parties, which was scheduled to take place on June 12 in Singapore. We were informed that the meeting was requested by North Korea, but that to us is totally irrelevant. I was very much looking forward to being there with you. Sadly, based on the tremendous anger and open hostility displayed in your most recent statement, I feel it is inappropriate, at this time to have this long planned meeting. Therefore, please let this letter serve to represent that the Singapore summit, for the good of both parties, but to the detriment of the world, will not take place. You talk about your nuclear capabilities, but ours are so massive and powerful that I pray to God they will never have to be used. I felt a wonderful dialogue was building up between you and me, and ultimately it is only the dialogue that matters. Someday, I look very much forward to meeting you. In the meantime, I want to thank you for the release of the hostages who are now home with their families. That was a beautiful gesture and was very much appreciated. If you change your mind having to do with this most important summit, please do not hesitate to call me or write. The world, and North Korea in particular, has lost a great opportunity for lasting peace and great prosperity and wealth. This missed opportunity is a truly sad moment in history. Sincerely yours. Donald J. Trump. President of the United States of America. In an effort to avoid leaks, Trump ordered that the letter be released without telling our allies first. The cancellation took South Korea's government by surprise. The nation's president, Moon Jae-in, had played a pivotal role in setting up recent diplomatic developments. A representative from Moon's office said they are trying to figure out what President Trump's intention is and the exact meaning of it, according to the country's Yonhap news agency. Emergency meetings were called to address the announcement. Moon and the National Security Council met for an hour and their statement says, it is very regretful and disconcerting that the USNK summit will not happen as planned. Denuclearization and the lasting peace on the Korean peninsula cannot be abandoned or delayed as they are the historical assignment. The sincerity of the affected parties who have been working to resolve the problem has not changed. It is hard to resolve sensitive and difficult diplomatic issues with the current way of communications. We, hope that the leaders resolve problems through direct and close dialogue. It is widely thought that both China and Iran played a role in causing North Korea to up the rhetoric here. North Korea abruptly cancelled talks with South Korea last week out of anger over joint military tests with the U.S. and the Korean Peninsula. But Trump never wavered on his insistence that not only would there be joint military drills, 
but the full denuclearization of North Korea must take place. Something that was probably never going to happen. First Kim blamed John Bolton, then Mike Pence, but in the end, he never was serious about denuclearization or negotiating peace. I believe that North Korea was told to stall to give the Chinese time to finish militarizing the South China Sea, which they have now done. North Korea slammed Mike Pence for recent comments referencing the possibility of dismantling Kim Jong-un's regime if it refused to denuclearize. The regime said, I cannot suppress my surprise at such ignorant and stupid remarks gushing out from the mouth of the U.S. Vice President, adding we could surmise more than enough what a political dummy he is as he is trying to compare the DPRK, a nuclear weapon state, to Libya that had simply installed a few items of equipment and fiddled around with them. Cho Sun Hui, the North Korean Vice Minister of Foreign Affairs, warned that Pyongyang could make the U.S. taste an appalling tragedy it has neither experienced nor even imagined. In the statement, issued through official state media, Cho said that if talks were cancelled, the U.S. and North Korea could instead engage in a nuclear-to-nuclear -nuclear showdown. The rhetoric is ratcheting up once again. That didn't take long. Many Republican lawmakers praised President Trump for his move today, including Senator Marco Rubio, RFL, who said in a tweet that Trump's move was 100 percent the right decision. House Speaker Paul Ryan also chimed in, the North Korean regime has long given ample reason to question its commitment to stability. We must continue to work with our allies toward a peaceful resolution, but that will require a much greater degree of seriousness from the Kim regime. The Democrats also pounced when the news broke. The art of diplomacy is a lot harder than the art of the deal. The reality is, is that it's pretty amazing that the administration might be shocked that North Korea is acting as North Korea might very well normally act," Senator Bob Menendez, DNJ, said in a hearing involving Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. Except the administration was not shocked. They saw this coming two weeks ago and had planned for it. North Korea had a clear and final choice here. Step back and denuclearize or the U.S. will eventually stop them one way or the other. Trump does not mess around when it comes to military matters. North Korea deliberately sabotaged the talks and now we resume our scheduled dance. That was the news. We thought you might be interested in knowing about this. Please click like and subscribe. Thank you.